we have uh, Nipun Mehta joining in. Nipun, great to have you on the show. Good evening and thanks for taking out the time. So it's all about the Fed as we know, but I'll come back to the point that I was just making earlier. Was today's pullback on the Lal Street convincing at all for you? Well, good evening, Surbhi. Uh, great to be on the show. Uh, what you saw obviously today was uh, a bit of short covering that was there as far as market and domestic markets were concerned. Uh, you've seen markets getting beaten down, uh, FI is exiting for a uh, relatively long period of time uh, over anticipation of the Fed rate hike. Uh, but I think what you saw today was a bit of a relief rally or a bit of short covering, call it what you may. You could see the same thing tomorrow uh, depending on what kind of announcement finally uh, comes in. Uh, I think what's important is uh, that valuations are becoming relatively attractive uh, when you look at some of the very beaten down sectors that are there. Uh, but I think what's going to be critical is what kind of uh, the announcement the Fed comes out with and what kind of an outlook uh, Fed may, uh, the Janet Yellen gives uh, for subsequent rate hikes that could be there uh, during 2016. Uh, so all eyes clearly on the Fed uh, and the kind of announcement that comes in and the outlook that, that could come in. Nipun, if we go with the assumption that I think almost everybody in the world is going with that we will get a 25 basis points rate hike today, what might that mean for fund flows uh, for our market? So, uh, at least as far as domestic markets are concerned, uh, 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 anywhere from a 15 to 25 basis point rate hike seems to be uh, more or less discounted. Uh, I think, the, like I said, the outlook is going to be critical because uh, not just does it impact uh, the exchange rate movement, uh, but the Fed will also need to keep in mind what kind of, uh, what's the kind of inflation that's there globally, what kind of uh, uh, GDP rates are there, global growth that is there. You'd seen uh, China and a lot of the emerging markets as well as some of the Southeast Asian countries actually contributing significantly to global growth. Uh, while all that, the, while, uh, the, that has undergone a change and you've seen slowdown in a lot of the economies, U.S. clearly is uh, kicking in uh, in terms of growth. Uh, Europe still continues to be slow and that's something of the, the, the realignment of global growth is something that, which uh, Fed will need to keep in mind uh, while giving the outlook. Uh, in terms of uh, fund flows, I think we've seen significant outflows coming in from emerging markets. Uh, from domestic markets, we've seen both debt and equity outflows that, uh, that are there. Uh, 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 if, if there is that indication that there might not be a rate hike, at least for another two or three quarters, uh, that would very clearly mean uh, that there could be fund flows coming in back uh, to some extent into emerging markets. Whether they would come into India would be a question mark depending on what kind of uh, reforms the FIs continue to believe that there could be there in the domestic markets. And I think uh, that's where uh, the concern lies and you've seen outflows uh, beside, of course, the Fed rate uh, hike uh, as a consideration. So uh, I think the f flows would uh, come back, uh, but our sense is they might not come back thick and fast uh, till there are uh, till there is clarity on the reforms that could be there and some of the big reforms that are slated not just uh, for uh, the winter session of parliament but also that could be slated uh, in uh, the budget session of the parliament. So uh, important to keep watching out for the reforms beside of course the kind of outlook that the Fed gives uh, in the uh, meet today and tomorrow. All right, Nipun, let's just hold that thought and get in some more perspective. Here are some top market watchers with their expectations from Janet Yellen. I think we do see the Fed is, is getting off uh, getting off zero. It has been, as you say, t last rate hike cycle began in 2004. Uh, so I think the Fed wants to get off zero. They're going to go out of the way to say it's going to be very gradual. I think the interesting story is for 2016, how they communicate that liftoff. It basically speaks to raising interest rates very, very gradually. And so that would, should uh, comfort the market in terms of liquidity, but there's no doubt going forward that, you know, it's a changed world in terms of liquidity. We'll look at Federal Reserve. They must be prepared to tighten and ease at the same time. They must be prepared to tighten and then within six months go to negative interest rates. Mm -hmm. They must prepare to stimulate and they must prepare to withdraw liquidity. I'm almost certain there's going to be a rate hike, but I think it's going to be a rate hike that's going to be wrapped in a very dovish Christmas package, if you will, uh, that I think could encourage the market. Everyone is worried with the, with the nervousness in the high yield. Well, my goodness, the Fed is bumping up. What's going to happen? And I think once they turn around and see that the Fed, I'm not saying it's going to be one and done. People are talking that might be it, but I, 
I think it's going to be one and wait a long. Normally, when the Fed gets ready to tighten, it's because the economy's picking up speed and accelerating, and top line revenues and corporates are accelerating. This time, we're two or three years past that moment in the, in the recovery. So we're not going to see that expansion of corporate revenues here that would help buoy asset prices while the Fed starts to tighten. I think uh, it's definitely priced in in terms of the first move. 25 bips, uh, Fed fund target between 25 and 50 bips will be most likely the announcement. The, well, the Fed's doing this because they see the economy strengthening, right? We're getting good, good labor market prints and inflation looks like it's picking up. So we're not going to neutral. We're taking the foot off of the accelerator a little bit, going from zero to 25 basis points. Okay, so that is the big Fed question. Will she hike? Will she not? And if she does, what happens to fund flows? But, you know, I want to get a little sector-specific now with you, Nipun, and all eyes are going to be on Mahindra and Mahindra tomorrow. We know what's happened. We know the tough talk that we've heard from the Supreme Court. Uh, let's just work with what the court has said. If this partial diesel ban goes through and if vehicles above 2,000 cc are not allowed to be registered in the national capital, could it have a cascading impact some kind of fear coming in that this might be extended to other states as well. What is your sense on what uh, some of these auto majors might be in for? I think one very clearly uh, the kind of volumes that Delhi contributes is going to be uh, important. Uh, what kind of pollution levels in other states is going to define and de determine what kind of impact uh, some of these diesel vehicles have. Uh, but I think what it will lead to uh, finally is, depending on what kind of an order gets passed, there will definitely be a realignment of businesses that a lot of the diesel vehicle manufacturers will need to do, uh, not just in terms of uh, their capacity, uh, but also uh, in, in terms of uh, whether some of them need to switch to petrol. Uh, some of the companies already are focusing more on petrol and not on to diesel. Uh, uh, but uh, this kind of realignment of businesses. Also, please remember that uh, while volumes could get affected temporarily, uh, what's important is the costs that it brings uh, when there is the realignment of business that is there. So uh, for sure, I think uh, if it, companies which get impacted directly uh, uh, could see uh, one or two quarters of uh, 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 bottom line impact that could be there, PNL impact that could be there. Uh, if the, there is that, uh, the, the, the other part of the, uh, uh, the announcement that could potentially come in is uh, deregistration of vehicles above a particular age. Now, that is something that could bring uh, opportunity within uh, adversity, whereby a lot of the commercial vehicle manufacturers or uh, diesel uh, vehicle manufacturers which had not uh, targeted or which is not uh, budgeted for that kind of uh, sudden hike in demand is something that they could uh, suddenly start seeing if this kind of a ban uh, for uh, deregistration of vehicles, of old, older vehicles actually comes in. So uh, th there could be that opportunity that could come in for some of the diesel vehicle manufacturers. So uh, one needs to look at the order, but yes, there could be both negative as far as uh, these manufacturers is concerned, realignment of businesses, and as well as an opportunity for uh, some commercial vehicle manufacturers coming Ra in. Uh, Nibun, right now, are you advising uh, buy on any any of these auto majors, any of the blue chip stocks? Uh, not uh, based on this advertisement, I think one needs to watch. Uh, uh, based on this announcement, I think one needs to watch uh, what uh, finally could come in. Uh, but clearly, uh, from amongst uh, the larger uh, uh, companies between in, within the four wheeler and the two wheeler space, uh, at least the largest companies that are there, we uh, we do recommend. Uh, looking at them, uh, despite whatever valuations that they've seen. I think that opportunity, uh, both in terms of uh, this order uh, and or in terms of newer product launches that are coming in, uh, is something that will continue to contribute to uh, uh, the growth of some of these companies. So uh, while I would uh, avoid getting stock specific, I think uh, the largest companies or larger companies within the two-wheel and four-wheel space is something that uh, uh, warrants a look. Uh, one needs to clearly wait for this order tomorrow uh, and take a, a decision on entering some of these. Okay, so anxious moments for a lot of automakers, including Mahindra and Mahindra, of course. Nibur, I want to talk to you about banks, but before that, it's uh, important to listen to what Power Minister Piyush Goyal has told us today. He's quite upbeat that all states will sign up for the Uday plan to revive discoms by the end of this financial year. He says 11 states have already signed up, and uh, sources are also telling us that Uttar Pradesh could sign in as early as tomorrow. Mr. Goyal says all bankers are on board. We also discussed with those bankers... Mm who may not have had a stake in discoms, but have lent to a power company, right. which are today stranded, stressed, mm. without PPA, without business, could possibly become uh, NPAs, NPAs. Yeah. in the days to come. So Uday gives the ray of hope. 
that all that also will get resolved in the days to come. Okay. And therefore, the entire scheme was discussed with bankers ad nauseum. And before it was announced, I actually took a commitment from each one to make sure that nobody has anything which still leaves a scope for stress. Now that might alleviate stress for banks to an extent, Nipun, but it seems there's no end of stress inside because the market has been so worked up about how provisioning is going to be treated for a lot of these SDR accounts, that meeting with the Reserve Bank of India. And we've seen that play out on PSU stocks. Uh, what is your sense? PSU banks, already a very rocky year. Would you buy at these beaten down levels? I think uh, people with risk appetite can uh, can definitely look at it. I, when, when you look at the kind of valuations, um, r relatively sort of attractive valuations that you're seeing uh, for PSU banks, uh, it does warrant a look. Uh, there are definitely concerns that are there. There are both pros and cons in terms of benefits that could arise out of the uh, scheme that has been launched. Uh, yes, I think what the regulator is doing as far as provisioning is concerned is something that's going to only clean up balance sheets uh, and only uh, improve uh, their strength, uh, both CDR and S. SDRs, uh, but particularly the SDRs that uh, a lot of the banks have been doing. Uh, but I think most of the concerns as far as PSU banks are concerned seem to have been factored in. Uh, uh, unless, of course, there is, uh, uh, depending on whatever uh, the RBI has suggested, if there is provisioning in some of these uh, PSU banks, it could be probably for a quarter or two quarters at best. And uh, the names that uh, would get dramatically affected is something that's uh, really n known, some of the mid-sized banks that are there. Uh, probably within the uh, larger banks, uh, there might not be uh, a dramatic uh, provisioning that could happen. But our sense is some private sector banks also could get affected by the kind of uh, announcement that could come on the uh, SDR provisioning that uh, RBI might come out with. So uh, it could definitely uh, concerns that are there for the banking sector, but valuations are becoming attractive. If, if one does have the risk appetite to hold on uh, for uh, anywhere more than two to three quarters, I think, uh, you are seeing uh, an opportunity in terms of valuations for both for the private sector and public sector banks, given the kind of beaten down uh, pricing that you've seen over the last two or three weeks for the entire banking space. Okay, so PSU banks for the brave heart. That, on that note, we'll take a very quick break, but uh, we'll uh, get you some